Hi, this is Jesse from Hasura, and in the next three to five minutes, I'm gonna give you a technical overview of the Hasura platform through both a business perspective while interlaced with the technical components. If there's any point in time during this demo that you would like uh, me to stop, just ask the representative to go ahead and stop this video and he will explain what I just said or take a note to have us clarify later on. What we're looking at here is the Hasura console, uh, which is part of the Hasura GraphQL engine. We use the term engine pretty liberally because what it's doing is it's converting GraphQL to whatever the underlying data source is uh, that you're trying to read from. If you're trying to go from Postgres, or you're trying to read from Snowflake, we will take GraphQL and we will take all the permissions and configurations defined inside of the engine, either through the console or programmatically through the metadata, and then we will go ahead and create the SQL statements, the REST calls, or whatever else is needed from the underlying data sources so that you have a very performant, fast, and secure way of reading your data. Now, how this actually makes a business difference for you with your digital modernization, with your transformations, with your new initiatives, is that we're normalizing data access. The same GraphQL approach can be used for Postgres and for Snowflake or for SQL Server and for Mongo. This allows you to be able to really quickly make both semantic relationships across your data, as well as apply top level permissions across all your data sources and lift up everything that you're trying to do in terms of API governance instead of having it embedded deeply down inside of your data. Hasura views this as a model-driven configuration as code approach. And we're gonna have a look at just how this uh, plays out uh, here in just a couple of seconds. Well, what I'm gonna do here for this demo is I have a relatively complex schema that's in a data vault pattern. It's sort of a, a transactional investment banking kind of idea. Now, a data vault pattern is a relatively complex schema shape. It's great for analytical workloads on top of transactional data, but it's not one that's really easy to query from. With Hasura, we're gonna actually simplify that process by adding in our database, tracking these models that are gonna be coming from the tables, tracking the relationships, and then being able to add on some additional services on top of that. Let's go ahead and actually have a look now. We're gonna to go to the data tab here, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in a Postgres database. And I'm gonna do that via environment variable that I have stored here. And this is just a Postgres connection string, and by convention, I'm just gonna go ahead and label mine as default. With that in place, what Hasura is gonna do is it's gonna actually introspect my entire schema and see these tables, and it's gonna ask me if I wanna track these as models inside of my metadata. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I could have namespaced these or whatever else I would need to do, but in this case, I'm just gonna track them, and it now sees that I have all of these foreign key relationships. Like I said, the data vault pattern can be a little bit verbose when it comes to schema design. I'm gonna go ahead and track all of these as well, and we'll see that we now actually have a fully functioning GraphQL API ready to go. Like really just like that. And if we were to go ahead and actually test out querying some of this data, I'm gonna go ahead and make a special query here to get accounts. I'll give it the name of the operation and I'll call this something like get accounts. And with that in place, I can now do something like grabbing the client hub, getting the client ID. We'll go ahead and get the accounts We'll go ahead and get the account hubs, and we'll go ahead and get the account type on the satellite first. And we'll go ahead and grab the account balance. Yeah, verbose, but very easy to reason about now that I have it converted to GraphQL. Let's go ahead and run this, and we'll see that we have access to all of our data for both the client ID all the way down through our different balances. What's also great is if I wanted to make this a cache directive, I could go ahead and simply do that by adding in the cache directive and now I would have a cached query as well. That's built in part of the Hasura Enterprise platform. Now it's great to actually have access to this data, but we'll notice that we actually have everybody's account balance. Well, by lifting our configurations out of our, our databases, instead of embedding it deeply inside of the models, we're able to give fine-grained uh, role access, row access permissions, A back and C back and R back style permissions at a metadata layer. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that by going to the data tab here. I'm gonna go to this public schema. I'm gonna go to the client hub. 
and I'm going to go ahead and just give permissions to lock down access to this table. Going to the permissions layer, I'm going to make a new role called client. And I'm going to go ahead and select a special uh, role here. I'm going to go ahead and say with a custom check. And we'll go ahead and call this the client ID is going to be equal to an incoming uh, session variable um, or header with the accessory user ID. This could be coming from a JWT or something else. I'll go ahead and say save permissions. And now if I go back over to my API, if I go ahead and enable this, I'm going to say accessory role is, equal, is going to be the client. And as soon as I tab out of this, notice what happens to the, my API surface. I now have a much more restricted API surface that they, this role literally does not know of any other tables existing. And now I'm going to go ahead and say Exasura user ID is now going to be the C0001 ID that we had. I think that was an uppercase C. Let's go ahead and run that now. And you'll see that we're even getting data validation errors because it's saying that it doesn't know about any other tables. We'll run that and we're now actually scoped down to just the client that we're requesting for. Not embedded in the database, not embedded in, in having to pass on permissions deeply throughout the database. I can actually just make this be a top level metadata uh, primitive. Now it's great for all the automatic tracking and everything else, but what if I actually wanted to add in additional services? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick changeover for my metadata here and we'll have a look at what some additional features might look like. All right, we're back inside of another Hasura instance here where now I've added on some additional endpoints. For one, I've added in a REST connection to a Forex daily read where I'm able to add in this REST service into my existing GraphQL API so that I could just simply query the daily Forex rates directly from my Hasura API. This is an extremely simple way to do it, but an extremely powerful way to have access to it when I wanna ship one API to all my developers. Further, depending on which database you're using, you can actually do things like event data capture and trigger off event-driven flows for doing things like alerting my, my support team of a stuck transaction. These are all the kinds of primitives you need for a very full-fleshed API that you get out of the box with Hasura. Let's return back to our concept about models again. So we go to the data tab and we saw all the models that were tracked out, out of the table. But what if I had a specifically an analytical related table where I wanted to just simplify as one top level API access point that potentially is composed of multiple other tables? Well, I can do that through a functionality here called native queries, where if I go ahead and look at one of these, we'll see that I have a SQL statement prepared ahead of time that is mapped to a specific logical model that I'm able to say persists this in metadata, not even as a stored procedure on the database, persist this in metadata and call this with either named query parameters or however else I would need to operate. This is just touching the top of what Hasura is able to do. And it has so many more functionalities, everything from looking at our ability for API governance, looking at allow lists, security functionalities, rate limiting, everything that you would need to ship a production grade API quickly and out of the box. As a, container, as a containerized platform, I can do this on-prem, I can do this in the cloud. It's a, a, an accessible, usable, reusable platform and way of building that will really revolutionize the way that you build software. That's it for this short overview and demo. I'm gonna hand it back over to the account rep. If you have any questions, let us know and we're happy to show you more. Thanks and have a great day, bye.